All right, so there's two lessons for the price of one today. First one, how to use DAX to actually trigger icons for conditional formatting. And the second lesson, how to toggle between variances being good and bad based on whether it's income or expense. Like a positive variance isn't necessarily good for both things. Okay, let's go. All right, so the first thing is gonna be DAX-driven icons. So check out my DAX formula. I've got icon good equals circle high. What is this? This has been around for years, apparently. In fact, when I started looking up this, how to do this, I came across um, Reza Rad's post from like three years ago. So I'll put a link in the notes to Reza's blog post as well. Um, check this out. I can change this to any of these descriptions. So like flag high. And there we go. Look, we've now got flags. So all these words, you can use any of these words in your DAX formula to then impact your conditional formatting. So how have I assigned this conditional formatting? Well, I've created a rule, which I'll come back to in a second. I'll click on it now, just to show you. Okay, looks a little bit freaky. All right, let me zoom out a little bit so it's not quite as massive on the screen. So all it is is a switch true statement, and it brings back, and ignore the rest of it for one second. If something's bad, you get the bad icon. If it's neutral, you get the neutral. So the, these are the three measures that I've written, okay? I just showed you icon good, all right? So this is the name of the measure, and I use that in my conditional formatting. I'll come back to explain the rest of this in a second, okay? So what do I do? Well, in here, I've simply gone to the PL variance, right clicked, and said conditional formatting, icons, and I've simply changed this box to field value and chosen that measure, the conditional formatting icon measure, okay? And then that just works, which is pretty cool. I did a video a little while back, a little link will pop up for just doing the same thing with a, with a color. But essentially it's the same process, but with color good, I've just used a hashtag. Um, I could swap that out. Let's say I think, oh, this green's a bit dark. Double click on that, just paste, I'll paste this color in instead. And I use color picker to find my, or from um, Power Toys to go and um, pick that color. Again, check out the other video if you're interested in how I did that. But if I change this, check out this, the color, a nice lighter. And I could go to color bad. Here we go. All right, and I'll just use this color instead because maybe that red's a bit dark. And press enter. And now the nice thing about using these measures is that you can just adjust them in one hit and they're the lighter red. All right, so it's just, a nice way of managing stuff without having to go into that horrible user interface for conditional formatting and apply rules over and over again. You can manage them centrally. And I've just set up a separate little um, measures table via the home tab, enter data button and stored all my conditional formatting in here, okay? So what was this extra bit of the formula? So let me go back to this, okay? Variance adjusted for sign. So all I've taken is the variance measure, which is actual minus budget, nothing fancy there. But then I'm multiplying it by this category sign or the, the selected value, which is the, the value that results when a filter is being applied. Okay. And then it's that adjusted variance. Okay. Essentially this sign is just a positive one or a negative one, depending on whether it's income or expense because the way the data's coming in, all the numbers are coming in positive. So if you want to report the numbers positive, let's say, let's focus on rent here. The actual rent was $10. The planned rent was $20. So we were $10 under, which is good. If that was income and we were $10 under, we, it would be bad. Okay, just like up here, mentoring, $100 
per actual. We were hoping for 120, therefore we're under, and therefore that's bad. So we get a negative turns red, whereas a negative is turning green. Okay, so how do you get that selected value? Okay, this, this category sign. Well, often those are already built into your mapping table when you're doing PL reporting, because sometimes you do want these pluses and minuses to be swapped around. However, if they're not, it's just a Power Query column. So I would just go into Power Query into my data here. And you may have a mapping table for this rather than actually doing it in the in the fact table. But let's just go into the query for PL data just to show you. But all I've done is added a conditional column to get this category sign. And if I click on the little cog for the conditional column, okay, it's just saying, look, if the type, which is this column, equals income, then put a one, otherwise put a minus one. Now, if you had different types of categories and, and things, then you'd have a, a longer set of rules. And that conditional column is purely added by going add column, conditional column, okay? I won't insert a step, but that was what created that little step there. So it's really just using this, okay? The selected value, you could use max or min as well, you know, potentially. So it's just basically saying, what's this value when you're filtering for something? So is it income, is it expense? And then we're just adjusting the measure to be sort of multiplied by a minus one or a plus one. So let me just come back into the formula just to wrap up. Okay, so here it is. Okay, we're just saying take whatever the variance is and multiply it by minus one or plus one. And then this rule applies. So you can use this rule over and over again, this pattern, for all sorts of different variances. The only bit you have to edit is that bit and the name of the variance. Okay, if you've got different variances. All right, this file will be available for download. Let me know what you think in the notes. Always check out the description of my videos because quite often I come up with new ways of doing something or something changes in Power BI. So I update or put a link to the latest video. So always check out the links. All right, catch you in the next video.